I'm Maddie Gardner here with Tahitian Moist. We are going to go ahead and get to our top story. Eric Tilton also here today. But big news coming out just moments ago. The Lexington Barbecue Festival, as we know it, will not happen this year. The 37th event was scheduled for October 24th, but because of the pandemic, it is canceled. Instead, Lexington's Signature Festival will host smaller and virtual events. The festival brings in crowds of 100,000, and this is the first time in the barbecue festival's history that something like this has happened. The festival says to go ahead and save the date for next year. It is October 23rd, 2021. Well, the CDC released more back to school resources for parents, teachers and schools today. They list things to consider when sending kids back to school. The role of schools in fighting the spread of the virus and more research on children and the coronavirus. Their new decision making tool has 30 questions to consider a community's risk of spreading the virus. It also has a separate checklist for parents to go through. That list includes checking for symptoms and making sure kids know how to properly wear a face mask and how to wash their hands before going back to school. The CDC says it's important that schools urge prevention strategies. President Trump is now saying it's possible some schools may need to hold off on reopening until the virus is under control in that area. In recent weeks, you remember the president was adamant about reopening all schools. Well, now his administration is saying and his administration had said that they would pull funding if schools stayed closed. Well, the president is now saying some schools may need to delay reopening if they're in the center of a hotspot. He also discussed a proposal to add $105 billion for schools into a second stimulus aid package. He says that money is for the students, not just school districts. If schools do not reopen, the funding should go to parents to send their child to public, private, charter, religious, or home school of their choice. The key word being choice. If the school is closed, the money should follow the student so the parents and families are in control of their own decisions. President Trump says for those schools in hot spots, decisions will be made by the governors. Now, we have covered what the school systems here in the triad are doing. If you need that information, you can find our back to school blog on WFMYNews2.com. You can also text us for the information. Just text the word school to 336 379 5775, and we'll send you everything you need to know for the upcoming school year. Well, let's get to your fortified roundup this Friday afternoon. President Donald Trump will be in North Carolina on Monday. He's touring a biotechnology center in Morrisville. The facility is producing parts of a COVID-19 vaccine candidate. This is the president's 10th trip to our state since he took office. Of course, we will have full coverage of the visit here on WFMY News 2. It will be a full week of remembrances and special moments to honor the late congressman and civil rights leader John Lewis. There are multiple events in his home state of Alabama over the weekend, including a processional over the historic Edmund Pettus Bridge, the scene of the infamous Bloody Sunday 55 years ago where Lewis was badly beaten during a march to Montgomery. On Monday and Tuesday, Lewis's body will lie in state at the U.S. Capitol building first in the rotunda and then with social distancing rules in effect on the east front steps for public viewing. The Chinese Foreign Ministry wants the United States to close the embassy in China. They also want to cancel operations and events held by the Consulate General. Now, this stems from a July 21st demand from the U.S. to close the Chinese Consulate General in Houston, Texas. A statement from China says the move breached international law and the basic norms of international relations, and their request is a necessary response. Let's look at some temperatures and talk about this forecast that, uh, well, these temperatures are a whole lot better, aren't they, than those 92s, 93s that we're seeing for a while. Um, most of the shower activity is not over the triad, but we do have run the risk of an isolated thunderstorm, as usual, this time of the year. Here are the readings, 86 in Greensboro and High Point, 88 Burlington, Winston-Salem, you have 85 degrees, 91 if you head south toward Albemarle, and 90 in Troy, in Montgomery County. 72 for the overnight low tonight, again, partly cloudy, could see an evening storm or two, the high tomorrow, 90. We are back to lower 90s. 
or most of our seven-day forecast, if not all. And you look at the radar and satellite combination, a lot of the uh, shower activities to the south. And in fact, thunderstorm activity that we've seen in that area is down towards Charlotte area. So Mecklenburg County and York seeing a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for a while. Some of that is staying to our south, but again, just don't be surprised if you see an isolated storm or two. In just a minute, we're going to talk about two tropical systems we have out there. We'll let you know where they are and where they're headed. Congress is one step closer to announcing what a second coronavirus aid package will look like. Republicans intend to announce the package early next week. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin says there is an agreement reached on the dollar amount Americans will receive in direct stimulus checks. The proposal also includes $15 billion for child care centers to operate safely. One aspect of the proposal stalling negotiations right now is federal aid for unemployment benefits. The $600 per week extension is set to expire tomorrow. Now, Republicans worry if the aid is extended, people will be less willing to go back to work. Republicans are proposing an extension, but only offering $100 in additional aid per week. Mnuchin says the Republican bill wants to replace 70% of a person's wages, so they're not making more money on unemployment than if they were working. So Governor Cooper did urge Congress earlier this week to extend those benefits to help North Carolinians. Uh, Brian Bennett uh, is with us today, and we're talking about what do people have to say about that amount or extending those benefits. I'm urging Congress to act quickly to extend this benefit. That we right now are adding jobs back into our economy, and that's good. Folks are still struggling, and many are still out of work. Right now, we can talk to Brian Bennett. Uh, what do people have to say about the amount of extending <laughs> those benefits? Sorry, Brian, I jumped the gun there on you. Hey, totally fine, Eric. It happens. Uh, people are saying a lot. A lot of interesting comments actually came out of the comment section on this particular issue. So I'm not going to waste any time. Let's jump right in. Uh, Laura says, uh, I wish my job were available, but since it's currently not, it would be really great to have this extended. So obviously she's for the benefits actually being extended. Uh, Sharon says, let businesses reopen and folks can go back to work. While Dorothy says, I agree to give those out of work unemployment, but giving them three times what they would draw is, I believe she meant ridiculous. Why would anyone want to go back to work? Of course, that's one of the uh, the things that was brought up in this piece before we actually got into the comment. Uh, Brenda says, thank you, Governor Cooper. Keep fighting for North Carolina. While lastly, Crystal says, people need to get back to work. They need to pay the people that hasn't yet got all their unemployment first also. So overall, I think people do want to get back to work, but people also want what is due to them. By now, you've probably heard about the city of Asheville approving reparations for its black residents. But now a Greensboro couple decided to provide symbolic reparations for their black tenants. I spoke with the couple about why they did that and what they hope for moving forward. I think we each have to look at ourselves and say, what can I do? Where am I now? And what can I do now? For Martha and Bob Tilliard and many across the country, the death of George Floyd was the tipping point. Well, we were horrified uh, at another incidence of um, of really what what I think we're all coming to understand is systemic racism. After getting the idea from someone else, the Greensboro couple said they had to do something. So they penned a heartfelt letter and divided their stimulus check among their six black tenants. We needed to speak up and we needed to act. We needed to take some action. The letter starts reading, Bob and I have always known and believed black lives matter. It goes on to say that they are committed to change and fighting for equality and welcomed conversations about how to help make that happen. And also to use it as a symbolic reparation or gesture to say, you know, we understand uh, a, a bit of what you've gone through, not just now, but 
in your whole lives. And throughout the letter, you felt her, her compassion and you felt just her, her worry and concern. Monica Garthier says she was taken aback when she received the letter and check. That is truly, to me, a symbolic definition of love thy neighbor. That's what that really means. We have two people, different generations, um, different races, different backgrounds, different everything, lifestyles, different everything. And at that moment, it was nothing but other than love and support. The couple says at first, they were worried about how it would come off. You gotta stick your neck out a little bit. You know, you're gonna take some flack, some heat from people who don't understand where you're coming from. But, uh, you know, we just feel like we need to contribute something to the, to the movement. But after speaking with Garthier and their other tenants, they knew they made the right decision. Garthier says everyone has the ability to create change by listening and learning. Have a conversation. Get some understanding. Put yourself in someone else's shoes, and you can start simply with just your neighbor. And the Tilliards hope by sharing what they did, they can inspire others to make a difference in their own community. Now, Maddie and Eric, you know, something that struck me, Monica says, there's a lot of little things that people can do to make a big impact. Tasha, I agree wholeheartedly, and I think Monica said it best. This is truly love thy neighbor. This is what we are told to do, and they are showing that love, their landlords, by just a small gesture, but it has such a big impact. I have to tell you, it makes me so happy. Uh, I can't tell you how happy I am just to have a positive piece of news, you know, to see something good in this, this realm that we're also concerned with right now it just makes your heart sing at this time. And you're right, sometimes it's small things that mean so much. Right, and you think about the trickle down effect that that has and the dominoes that can fall because of one kind gesture. I mean, this could go a long way. Yeah. And and that's the thing with the ripple effect, right? It's usually when you see someone do something nice or you see someone do something in general, you're like, hey, maybe I can do something like that. It may not be exactly that, but you figure out what works for you. And I'm glad that it was two generations, two different generations. That was cool to me. Yeah, I like when she pointed out all of their differences, but still. Yes. That, that show of love. Thank you so much, Tasha. Great story there. All right, well, we are going to break, but the Four to Five continues. We are live on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Use our hashtag Four to Five to join our conversation. We'll be back.
Welcome back to your 4 to 5. A high school in Virginia is removing the name of Confederate General Robert E. Lee. Instead, it will be named in honor of the late U.S. Representative John Lewis. The Fairfax County School Board approved the change last night. They also considered naming the school after President Barack Obama, Cesar Chavez, and Mildred Loving, among others. In Chicago, two statues of Christopher Columbus were removed overnight. The move comes after public outcry that the monuments are an insult to indigenous Americans. Now crowds cheered as the monument was removed from Grant Park. But in Little Italy, the removal was met by somber silence. The Joint Civic Committee of Italian Americans called the statue removal disheartening. They say they were not consulted and want to know when the monuments will be returned. Well, the Washington governor, Jay Inslee, announced a limited number of federal agents are being sent to Seattle. Now, President Donald Trump said he would send federal agents to several different cities to help fight rising levels of crime. But Seattle was never mentioned as part of that program. Governor Inslee says federal agents are now on standby in case they are needed. In the meantime, federal agents in Seattle follow 56 nights of civil unrest in Portland, Oregon. Protesters and federal agents once again clashed last night. Protests gathered around the U.S. District Courthouse demanding that agents leave the city. They tried tearing down the fencing surrounding the courthouse, and agents used tear gas once again. Earlier, demonstrations in the city were peaceful, but as night fell, things took a turn. The NAACP chapter in the area said they will reevaluate their efforts to keep the Black Lives Matter movement alive, but consistently peaceful. More of the four to five when we come back. So more and more people are taking up kayaking for the first time in an effort to find some good social distancing activities. That makes sense. A Virginia kayaker says that's all good and well, but first time kayakers, they need to be careful. First aid kit, really important. But with that, more problems that expert kayaker Wayne Bradby is seeing as COVID-19 brings new people to try out kayaking. I, I, I was at a lake recently and there was two people pulling out in kayaks. They, they told me they had just gotten them. 
not a PFD to be seen, and there they go off into a lake. A PFD, a personal flotation device, better known as a life jacket, something he says people neglect. Okay. You just cook it. You don't, you're not required to wear it, but common sense tells you that you should. Now, the U.S. Coast Guard reported last year a total of 125 deaths related to kayaking, though that figure also included canoeing as well. It's statistics like that that one local officer says could have been prevented if people just wore their life jackets. It's hard on the officers. It's, it's hard on anybody that's got to go over and tell somebody that their loved one has passed. And it's even harder to go ahead and tell them why. Sergeant Ron Cagle with the Virginia Marine Resources Commission says he's responded to kayaking accidents where he's found the bodies of kayakers, but no life vest. Lots of excuses. Too hot, too bulky, this and that. You know, I always hear this one. They go over and say, well, a good life jacket's expensive. Well, yeah, but what's your life worth? Bradby says the sturdiness and soundness of equipment can also play a role, as well as the weather. Seasons such as fall, winter, and spring can be dangerous when the water is colder, but as Sergeant Cagle advises... Practice, practice, practice. Well, if you are looking for some place to go kayaking, there are five places you can go here in North Carolina. Our state magazine says the number one hidden kayaking spot is on the Roanoke River to Devil's Gut near Jamesville. Up next, the Rocky River Blue Way from Far Family Preserve to Riverbend Farm in Midland, North Carolina. Next, Three Sisters Swamp in Atkinson and then Milltell Creek along the Alligator River National Wildlife Refuge near Buffalo City Road. Yes, there are some alligators, but also some other wildlife as well. Lastly, Chiowa River has back-to-back -back rapids in Robbinsville. No matter where you go, stay safe. The Fort of Fine will be right back. In just a few minutes, I want you to stick around because in my two cents segment coming up, I'm going to weigh in on this. But I have a condiment question for you, and it's simple. Dukes or Hellman's? 
Of course, we're talking mayonnaise. It is an old Southern argument, and people are very serious on either side of the mayonnaise militia. So I want to know on Facebook, I said, which is it for you and why? And boy, did people take this seriously. Let's take a look at some of the comments. By the way, you can't tell because all of these are in all caps, but Joyce was yelling this. She wrote, Dukes, I was raised on Dukes. It makes potato salad, slaw, and tomato sandwiches taste great. Melissa Singleton said, I grew up in eastern Tennessee. We always ate Hellman's. Only other choice was JFG. I never heard of Dukes until I moved to North Carolina in 1985. Teresa Bradshaw said, I didn't realize there was anything other than Dukes. End of discussion. Shirley Bottom said, Hellman's brought up eating Dukes, but Hellman's is much better to me. Kathy, she says, Dukes and only Dukes. It is the best. It tastes homemade and is a Southern tradition. Susie Keen Witty said, Hellman's, I grew up on Dukes and it gags me now. That's how serious some people take it. I will tell you that I do like both for totally different reasons. I like them on different things, but I did grow up a Hellman's guy and it took me a while to get to Duke. Duke, to me, growing up was a South Carolina thing because I would see friends and relatives down there have it. I didn't know what it was. And I found out later it was actually invented in South Carolina. Yeah, it's a little bit tangier, Dukes. It I is. also grew up on Hellman's, um, but I've seen a lot of Dukes fans lately coming out. Now, mind you, I said Dukes fans, not Duke fans, because we don't talk <laughs> about those, right? As There's a Hill. lot of them. Just kidding. Um, but yes, this is almost as uh, controversial as Duke Carolina, for sure. This is what happens when you're not from the South. I'm like, <laughs> people have preferences over mayonnaise i don't know i don't really like any mayonnaise to be honest with you i guess i'll have the mayonnaise if it's in the potato salad uh but that's really about it but i've never had dukes so i don't know if i would like dukes over hellman's i've only had hellman's look for it it has the yellow cap on the top to asia Yes, Maddie, I have to tell you real, real quick, Our State Magazine did a whole online poll about this, and a lot of people were going for one particular brand, but if you stick around for my two cents, you'll see which is the winner. The Great Mayo Debate. I like that graphic yes. on the bottom of the screen. All right, you can let us know what your favorite mayonnaise is. All right, well, let's talk about a forecast here because we've got some showers and thunderstorms, but are they right over the triad? And the answer is no. Thank goodness. We need a break after yesterday. That was a mess. Look to the south. Most of this is around the Charlotte area. Um, it's sort of lingering down there. When you look at it, some of it is drifting a little bit our way, but I think overall we're going to be in okay shape. Now, will you see one or two here or there? Yes, absolutely. This time of the year, we can't rule that out. Um, what's left of this cold front well, to the north of us will kind of break apart and it'll move across the area. But really, we just look at typical late day pop up showers and thunderstorms. Some heat will return over the next few days. So you'll see some of some of that happening. But overnight tonight, an isolated thunderstorm or two seventy two. And I actually think we'll get some of these storms later than we normally do for tonight. Um, ninety one to ninety three. That is the range of highs for the next seven days. Solid. Overnight lows around 71 to 72 for the most part, and we have a 30% chance of a late day shower to a 20% through the weekend. 40% though for Monday, or excuse me, Tuesday, Wednesday, back to a 30 and 20 for Thursday and Friday.
good Friday afternoon and welcome back to your four to five. I'm Maddie Gardner here with a very excited Eric Chilton and Tahitia Moise this afternoon who are both working from home. Of course, we are here to inform you, make you feel connected and let you into our world. So use our hashtag four to five to stay connected on social media. Well, let's start out here by getting you to your four to five roundup. Rockingham County Sheriff's deputies are looking for two people who they say are armed and dangerous. Dikembe Williams and Karina Espinoza are wanted in connection to a home invasion on Sardis Church Road that happened Thursday morning. Authorities did arrest one person who they believe was also involved. Matthew Dev is charged with kidnapping, robbery with a dangerous weapon, and assault with a deadly weapon intent to kill, among other charges. Call Crime Stoppers if you know anything about this crime. Well, air travel is getting bumpier for travelers who refuse to wear a face mask. Delta has put 120 passengers on its no-fly list after they would not comply with the airline's requirement to wear a mask on the plane. Delta is also expanding COVID-19 testing to cover all employees in the next month. Now, earlier this week, we told you about Delta. They announced people who have a mask exemption have to be screened over the phone, and that would bar anyone who makes up a fake medical excuse for not wearing a mask. Well, it set social media and pop culture ablaze, and it made my Friday. Taylor Swift dropped a surprise album overnight, so Folklore is Swift's eighth studio album. She wrote and recorded all of the songs entirely in isolation. Critics and fans alike are raving about Swift's new mellow sound. She collaborated with several talented artists, and she also released a music video overnight that she directed herself. You can see my full review right now in our Facebook comments. Just join the 4 to 5 live stream. I know you care about that sort of thing. Join the conversation. Well, in other news, the body of a UNC Wilmington professor was found on Thursday. Mike Adams recently retired amid backlash over social media comments in which he compared Governor Cooper to a master and North Carolina to a slave state. Authorities have not said how Adams died or any of the circumstances around his death. His tweets that the university said were vile prompted 60,000 people to sign an online petition to get Adams fired. Earlier we talked about our local forecast, which is kind of more of the same, just great late day pop up isolated showers and storms, not like yesterday, and the heat will come back tomorrow, low 90s. But we got to talk about a tropical situation here. Tropical storm Gonzalo here, you can see the winds at 45. This is moving west at 18. So if you scoot ahead to about Monday there, you can see it's starting to enter into the Caribbean um, right now, way too early, obviously, to say anything. And it should be just a low pressure by Monday morning with winds around 35 miles per hour. Now I want to show you this one, tropical storm Hannah. This will play a role for Corpus Christi and down toward uh, Texas, southern tip of Texas there. As that moves ashore, probably Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening time frame uh, as a tropical storm with winds at 60 miles per hour. So neither one of those, of course, will affect us. Here's our seven-day forecast. Uh, it's pretty consistent, isn't it? Low 90s, you're looking at that for the next seven days, between 91 and 93, not a lot of change. Overnight lows, mostly around 71 to 72 for that neck of the woods. Rain chances each afternoon and evening, it's a normal 30% for Saturday, but a reduced 20% for Sunday, Monday, up to 40%. That'll be Tuesday, Wednesday, before we stair-step it back down again, 30 and 20% for Thursday and Friday, respectively there. All right, let's uh, talk about some travel, some tourism here, maybe a staycation. If you haven't been to Winston-Salem in a while, you are missing out. Great downtown, wonderful restaurants, a lot more. Nobody knows that better than the folks over at visitwinstonsalem.com. Their latest promotion may have you stopping by the Twin City for a staycation. I spoke with Marquita Cole Kiefer to get the word on this. Marquita, the goal, of course, these days is to get people to visit all of our cities in the triad. And this is kind of a cool campaign. Talk about it, how this can entice folks to come to Winston-Salem. Right. Well, we developed the Travel Back Summer Getaway campaign specifically um, to really highlight everything that you can do in, in Winston-Salem and around Forsyth County that is socially distant, that is safe, that is fun, that's relaxing and rejuvenating. It really is a pledge that we make and a promise that we make to the visitor at the different attractions, hotels, and restaurants that are in the Travel Back program that we care about their health, their wellness, their safety, as well as the teams at the different hotels as well to keep them safe and well. So, of course, I'm all about freebies. <laughs> Let's talk about what you can get. There's a little bit of a, a gift element to this if you come back and stay in Winston. 
Absolutely. Um, so for, um, for the length of the Travel Back Summer Program, if you book and stay two nights or more, which there's plenty to do that will fill in that two night stay, Visit Winston-Salem will actually give you our wonderful, special, roomy, canvas, very durable travel back backpack. And it's filled with our visitor guide, um, our wine and dine guide, restaurant guide, and some other um, local goodies. Marquita, thanks so much for taking time today. We love this promotion. Good luck. Tahesha, this one was specifically for you. <laughs> if it's free, it's for me. <laughs> You know me too well, Eric. I was looking <laughs> at the photo there with the luggage tag. I'm like, oh, I need that. <laughs> <laughs> Go pick you up one. I think this is a great idea. Obviously, the tourism industry has taken a huge hit during this pandemic because people had to stay in their homes. Now that we're in phase two and several more places are opening, it's time that we go back out and patronize those businesses. You know, I spoke to a business owner who has a shop in downtown Winston-Salem. She also has a shop here in Greensboro, and she says the downtown Winston-Salem location is hurting because people aren't going downtown to work in offices anymore. So this is a way and a reminder for people to go out and support those small businesses. Well, I also, I was speaking with some folks, too, who had said that in some areas, not, not all, but in some areas, they were seeing 10% of the revenue that they had wow. seen in the tourism industry in some parts of our state. Goodness. All right. Well, let's patron them if we can, of course. All right. Well, President Trump says that he is going to throw the first pitch at the Red Sox-Yankees game in August at Yankee Stadium. The president says the return to sports is a great thing for our country at this time. He warmed up his throwing arm by playing catch with former Yankees pitcher Mariano Rivera and the Little League team on the south lawn of the White House. In the meantime, Dr. Anthony Fauci actually threw out the first pitch for the season opener yesterday. He threw that pitch for the Nationals-Yankees game. He even wore his Washington Nationals face mask to show his support for the hometown team. But Fauci was a big fan of Yankees player Joe DiMaggio and Mickey Mantle when he was younger. All right, before Dr. Fauci threw that opening pitch out, teams took a moment of silence and they kneeled. They kneeled with the black ribbon that stretched end to end along the foul lines as a statement to, quote, level the playing field for social justice. Racial inequality speech was played on uh, by Mor Morgan Freeman, actually, that read that. It was played over the Jumbotron at Nationals Park. During the warm-ups, the players wore T-shirts in support of Black Lives Matter and the letters BLM also on the back of the pitcher's mound right below the MLB logo. Well, another baseball team is making a statement in the name of the Black Lives Matter movement. The Red Sox posted a Black Lives Matter banner outside of Fenway Park this week. Now, the team recently backed uh, Tory Hunter. He's a former major league player who said he didn't want to be traded to Boston because of racist comments he had heard before at Fenway Park. That sign is longer than 200 feet and 20 feet high. Let's head across the pond for a bit. The UK Prime Minister reportedly wants to stop junk food ads from airing on prime time. He says obesity is increasing the severity of the coronavirus outbreak in the country. Boris Johnson is also expected to propose new rules about putting calorie counts on menus. He said he decided to go on a diet himself after concluding that his weight had been a serious factor in him developing a serious case of COVID-19 that left him in the ICU in April. The idea is to ban the ads before 9 o'clock p.m., but food manufacturers and ad agencies strongly oppose the idea. So I ask you on my Facebook page if you thought this would help. Let's take a look at a few of your responses here. Cheryl and Jester Petit says no, it will not help. That's the individual's choice. Sheila Gibson says people are going to eat what they're going to eat. Bobby Odom said, no, I don't think that it will help. People are still going to eat what they want, regardless of a crackdown. Thomas Dort said, maybe there's something to this. Seeing the picture associated with the article at lunchtime is giving me cravings. It was a picture of pizza, french fries, and cheeseburgers. Well, Richard Sample says, as a UK citizen and resident, I can say that we've actually been trying these crackdowns on various drinks and food types for a few years now. 
They do generally work in some regions, but not necessarily in others, namely the more deprived areas. So this was news to me that obesity can really cause a severity in COVID-19 symptoms, but it does make sense because you talk about those underlying health problems that can cause more complications. Yeah, that's right. And for me personally, w when I see, uh, you know, the calorie count on a menu or I see something like that, it gives me, you know, second pause to do I really want to eat this? Same thing with those uh, advertisements. Of course, they're going to make you want to eat them. And now I have that image in my mind as I'm going to the supermarket, mm. which is what those companies want, of course. I could do without seeing them all, and uh, my waistline could too sometimes. <laughs> you look great, Tahitia. Someone commented on my Facebook page, Eric, just don't go to the grocery store when you're hungry. That is rule number one. I, I don't think banning the ads will stop a lot of people from, it, it may take away that little bit of a reminder, like, oh, I would like to have some of that right now, but I, I don't think that's going to stop people from buying it. All right, we want to hear you t your take. Excuse me, chime in on our 4 to 5 live stream on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We'll be right back. Mic check, one, two, three, four. Mic check, four to five. Mic check. Welcome back to your 4 to 5. Let's get to a trending sports conversation. Washington's NFL team announced their temporary name will be the Washington football team. Now this comes after a push from multiple sponsors, but let's take a look now at their new uniforms. The team is keeping their burgundy and gold colors, but they're going to replace the logo on helmets with each player's individual number. Head coach Ron Rivera says as far as a permanent name goes, that's a work in progress. This is going to be about a 16 to 18 month process to do it the right way and, and, and really not, not, not miss the opportunity to rebrand ourselves, uh, hopefully for the next 100 years. For our digital guru, Brian Bennett, this has been a big talker since the team made that announcement this week. So I'm curious to know what people are saying about it online. Yeah, absolutely, Maddie. Some people actually had uh, alternative names and uh, other people just had, you know, comedic comments and things of that nature. So let's jump right in. Uh, Michael says, I like the Washington Bandits, while Judy says, oh, how 
creator of, in reference to the Washington football team. Billy says, what about the Washington, I believe he means soldiers, in tribute to the American military, strong name, while Dominique says, I hope they find a better name soon. Lastly, Richie says, how about the Washington losers? Obviously, Richie is a Dallas Cowboys fan. That's the only thing that I could come up with why he would say that. <laughs> They're both laughing. I could hear them before their shots came up giggling in my earpiece here. Um, yeah, the Washington football team, it's not the most creative thing. It certainly won't stick around. I know that Coach Rivera, which is still weird to say, by the way, Coach Rivera for the Washington football team anyway, uh, I'm sure that they will come up with some more options at a later date. At first, when I read that, I thought it was a joke, you know, that people were doing on Twitter because people on Twitter are hilarious just to begin with. Uh, but the more I read into it, I'm like, oh, no, this is real life. So Washington football team, that's how I feel sometimes when I talk about sports because I don't know what's happening. So I'm like, sports, <laughs> Washington football team, yay. <laughs> I think it kind of, it kind of works, you know. I think they should it should be the Washington Football Players, you know. That way, it's just super generic, and I think it's kind of funny. Um, I, I don't care what you call them; I just want football back, you know. Oh, it's okay, Chilton. It'll be back one it. day. One day, you know. <laughs> it, it bothers me that they don't have a mascot right now because that's just one of my favorite parts of the games is seeing the mascot and cheering for the team name. Now I'm glad that they are working on getting one, but in the meantime, it is going to be weird for people just to cheer, go Washington football team, <laughs> WFT. They can have a football. The football can be their mascot. Yes. That makes yes. sense. All right, someone paid to Asia. She came up with an idea. The 4 to 5 continues after the break, but we're always chatting on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Just use our hashtag 4 to 5. Hello, get rowdy, get rough, football team, show your stuff, woo!
So have you ever watched a movie or TV show and by the end you're like, this is the worst ending to a plot line that I've ever seen? Well, Twitter users are sharing their disappointment with different movies and TV shows. I told you people on Twitter are, are pretty funny. So there's they're using this hashtag, worst ending ever. So Brian Bennett, what are some of the endings that people think are just the worst? Oh my goodness, so, hey, so it's so many, right? So many. So let's just dive right on in. The first one is from Xena Warrior Princess, okay? They said the producer promised Xena wouldn't die, and then, well, yeah, guys, you know the rest. All right, let's keep it moving. Uh, this next user says, Why are we even having this conversation? The only correct answer is lost. Hashtag worst ending ever. Next, the Sunfield finale was, you guessed it, say it with me, the worst ending ever. And canceling freaks and geeks after one season was hashtag worst ending ever. Why did I get married to? You guessed it. Worst ending ever. And lastly, Game of Thrones fans. Hashtag worst ending ever. There is only one answer. Game of Thrones. I will never forgive them. Trash emoji. Trash emoji. There you have it. Yeah, I mean, I don't need to say anything else. Now the I Game of to... Thrones ending was horrible. Sorry, Tahesh, I didn't don't mean to cut it. you off. I'm just very passionate about this. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I, I was going to say the same thing because it was just horrible. They crammed basically two seasons worth of content into two episodes there at the end. I'm like, whoa, 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 no, back no, it up. No. You have plot holes. You have your no. holes. Chilton, listen, put your earpiece not... back in. You've had plenty of time to watch it. I We've know, but I have so haven't. much time. I haven't gotten through it yet, so I took my earpiece out for a second. All right, so I, I don't know about that one yet, but for me, somebody already said it, but Seinfeld was the absolute worst. And now these are shows that I absolutely love, right? So I love that. I wanted the ending to be good, not good. And then Dexter, which I loved on Showtime back in the day, the were second worst ending ever for me. Yeah, it's got to be Game of Thrones at the top. Honestly, I did not like the ending of How I Met Your Mother. That might be a little bit of an unpopular opinion. Mm. I loved the ending of New Girl which I just rewatched. Oh, and The Office. I could go on. Well, The Office, I could watch all day, all night. So, yes. Um, all right, but I digress, don't I? Let's talk about a forecast, shall we? Because things are looking, uh, they're looking a little bit better for today. However, we're back to kind of the low 90s. Look, I'll take 90 to 92 over that 95, 96 that we were seeing there for a while, any day of the week. 72 will be our low tonight. Uh, partly cloudy, an evening storm or two. Most of it is to the south of us now in Charlotte. Doesn't mean it can't get here, so watch out for that. The kind of a typical scene, not like last night. 91 will be the high tomorrow, that mix of sun and clouds. Let's take a quick look at the most recent radar image and the showers and thunderstorms now they're just to the southwest of montgomery county so a good bit to the south but watch out for that if you're in the star or troy area over the next little bit again any thunderstorm activity that we've seen have been around mecklenburg county and york counties not so much right across uh the triad proper uh the wide shot here you can see that from charlotte south and, and east that's where we're seeing most of the rain what's left of this cold front to our north will kind of push through on saturday really doesn't do much for us. Uh, maybe we get a late day pop-up shower or storm, but nothing major. And for tonight, again, look for that low around 72. The big thing that we're watching over the next week um, would be the fact that we're just so consistent. There's not a lot of change. It's uh, normal high this time of the year is 88, which by the way, that is our highest average high temperature that we see all year long. So we're at the hottest point of the year anyway. And we're only two or three degrees above normal for the seven day forecast, 91 to 93 for the next seven days. Get used to it, right? Low 70s for lows, 30% chance of a late day shower or storm Saturday, only a 20% for Sunday and Monday. Coming up on WFMY News 2 at 5 o'clock, the Guilford County Courthouse in Greensboro will stay closed longer than previously announced after more employees tested positive for the coronavirus. Which services are still available and what is being done before it reopens? That's next on WFMY News 2 at 5.
So did Matt car. Matt get by this car all by himself? Oh, I don't know about like the details of like who's, I'm sure he's paying for the front. Hi there, one, two, three, four, four. No, I mean, like I told him, like a friend of mine owns a dealer. Well, you caught me. <clears throat> About to stuff my mouth with M&Ms. Mic check. One, two, three. Hi there. So what dealership should we... August 3rd is the projected date for a full reopening here at the court. There are lots of things in life that are divisive. Politics, yeah. Carolina Duke, big time. North Carolina Eastern Barbecue versus Western Barbecue, yep, yep, yep. But there's one topic that may top them all. Dukes or Hellman's? Which mayonnaise militia are you in? Which camp do you believe in? Oh boy, do people take this seriously, especially in the South. Now, growing up, I thought Dukes was a South Carolina thing because that's where I saw it mostly. I found out later that it was indeed discovered or developed, invented in South Carolina, so that made sense. However, since then, this debate goes all across the South. Let's break down the two parties here. Dukes, tangier. They boast no added sugar. Many Duke lovers swear by it for chicken salad and pimento cheese. Hellman's on the other side. Smooth, rich, creamy. Hellman's fans say it is the choice for deviled eggs and on hamburgers. But the question still remains, where do you stand in this important issue that is facing us in this day and time? Our state magazine, they have a poll going right now. 76% are going for Dukes over Hellman's. I like them both on different things for different reasons, but I'd have to say I'm a Hellman's guy overall. So where do you stand in all this? And do we even bring up Miracle Whip? <gasps> Why did I do that? Sorry, it's just my two cents. That's your four to five. WFMY News 2 at 5 starts now. We are on top of breaking news out of Lexington. This year's barbecue festival has been canceled. The festival was scheduled for October 24th and brings in about 100,000 people to the city every year. So very popular every single year. Because of the large number of people expected to attend,